Race Advisor. In this video, we're going to look at why it's important to understand the variance of a rating. Now, very often, people assume that a rating is a single figure that is fact. So, if we have a speed rating, then the horse ran to that exact figure. Uh, the same with the official rating or the OR. Um, and whatever it is, it's assumed that that is the exact figure. Um, and this is not the case. A rating is simply an estimate of what we think um, or how we think a horse performed in a particular area. Um, and so with that in mind, it's important to know that if we have a rating of say 100, a horse may have achieved slightly less or slightly more than that figure. Um, and there are a number of ways in which we can, can look at this. Um, and today I've got a, a race that's happening at 12.20 at Lingfield as an example. Um, now you'll notice first of all that Nagina or Nagina um, has no ratings at all so we're not going to be able to use this on that particular runner. Um, but we can on all the others and I've got here some speed figures for each horse over the last eight races. Um, and obviously there's uh, Debbie Doo, who's only got two races worth of speed figures, and there's um, Arkalau, which has only got four races worth of speed figures. But we can still um, we can still look at the possible variance for these runners. So, if we were going to be looking at say a single figure, then we may just take a look at these, and we'd say, well, okay, you know, Ajdad has a speed figure of 168, so that's great. Um, and then Wise Craig has a speed figure of 161, but in reality they may have had slightly more or slightly less. So we need to be able to work out the variance, and by working out the variance we're going to have a much better idea of which runners are going to be competitive in this race and which aren't. Okay, so let's let's dig into a couple of calculations here. What we're going to do is we're going to use um, what is called an upper confidence and a lower confidence in order to determine the range that each horse should have. And now the more previous uh, figures that you have for each runner, the better. Um, but we can use uh, the functions that are already inbuilt into Excel in order to estimate this. And to do this, we're going to need to calculate a couple of things. Um, we're going to need to calculate the standard deviation. And we're going to need to calculate um, the number of ratings that we've got for each runner. So I'm just going to create a couple more columns here on the end. So I'm going to create standard deviation column. And I'm going to com uh, calculate a number of ratings column. Um, and again Excel helps us out here with the standard deviation so we just put equals and then if we go ST and then you can see it already pops up STDEV standard deviation and we open the brackets and we just select all the ratings that we've got for each horse and press enter and there's our standard deviation for Ajdad. Now we can type that in for each runner if we want to. Like this. Or I can just copy the formula down. And uh, notice who I have left out uh, Nagina at the bottom because we have no ratings. Uh, the less ratings that you have for a runner, the larger the standard deviation is going to be. Um, because we haven't got as much information, so we're less certain of it. Now, the number of ratings, I'm going to just use the count function. And we just go equals count, open brackets, and then select the range of fields. And we can see that Adstar has eight ratings. And I'm just going to copy that formula down as well. And you can see it very quickly calculates for us the amount of ratings that each runner has. Perfect. Now we want to calculate our confidence levels. 
And again, Excel helps us out. It has a confidence function already inbuilt into it, which makes all of this very easy. So I'm going to say um, a 95% confidence. To do that, we press equals and we type in confidence. And then we open bracket. And you'll see underneath it says alpha, standard deviation, and then size. Don't get worried by any of these things. They're very simple. The alpha is simply the confidence that you want. So if we want 95% confidence, then the alpha is 0 0.05. So um, we're working on a probability or similar to probability here. So 100% would be 1. Um, and 95% would be 0 0.95. Now, the difference is, is that this alpha works from the variation. So if we've got a 95% confidence, that means there's 5% left. Which that 5% becomes the alpha, which is why it's 0 0.05. So we put that in. If you'd like more details on how the alpha is actually statistically calculated, then there's plenty of information out there on Google. Just hit Google and you'll get all the details. Um, but all you actually need to know is that if you're looking for a 95% confidence, then we are interested. The alpha is the 5% left over, which is 0 0.05. So if we're looking for a 99% confidence, the alpha will be the 1% that's left over, so 0 0.01. The standard deviation we've already got, so we can just select that cell. And the size, which is the number of ratings we've already got, so we just select that cell and press enter. And immediately we have our confidence level. Now, the 6.722282, I'm going to actually reduce the decimal places to just a single figure. And I'm going to do the same here as well, it just makes it much easier to read and the decimal places aren't really going to make any significant difference to us so so the seven that we have as a confidence level a 95 percent confidence level for Ajdad tells us that his rating could be seven higher or seven lower and we have a 95 percent confidence that is going to be somewhere between those two values okay let me explain by making another column. This is going to be the lower and this is going to be the upper. We simply take our rating, we can use the last rating if we want, or we can use the average of all the ratings, whichever, or we could use the median. Um, whichever you want to do um, is fine. I'm going to use the um, I think I'm going to use the average of all of the last ratings for the horse and then the lower confidence level is going to be minus this figure. Okay, let me run through that once more. In fact, I'm going to make another. So this is so let's say this is our predicted rating. And our predicted rating is the average of all of these previous figures for that runner. Okay. Now, we're predicting that this horse, Ajdad, is going to have a figure of 157 in this race, just by using a simple averaging of the last eight races. So we actually now, we know that this is an estimate, um, and we want to work out what that estimate could be between which values that this figure should be reality, in reality, so the variance. Um, and to do that, we simply take our predicted figure and minus our 95% confidence for the lower confidence level. And for the upper confidence level, we take our predicted figure and add our 95% confidence. And these are the key figures that we are interested in. So what we have just calculated is that Ajdar could have 
a speed rating of anywhere between 150 and 164 in this race. And that is very important. So that is the variance of a rating. So it's not just a simple 157. Ashdod could have a rating of anywhere from 150 to 164, but we are 95% confident that it's going to be within those two figures. So there's only a 5% chance that it's going to be outside of that range. And this now becomes a very powerful and useful rating. So we expect it to be around 157, but it could be as low as 150 or as high as 164. We're starting to perform and get a much, form a much better concept of how this horse could run. Okay, I'm just going to run through that again and then we'll do the calculations for all of the runners and I'll show you how we can then use this. So we calculated our standard deviation by going equals STDEV and then selecting all the ratings for that horse. We then counted the number of ratings that we've got for that horse. So we've got eight ratings for Wisecrack. Next, we calculate our 95% confidence level by doing equals confidence. We put in our alpha, which is 0 0.05, so for 95% confidence, just to go through it once more, the alpha is the 5% that's left over, and because we're doing it in terms of probability, that is 0 0.05. We then enter a comma, and our standard deviation goes next in the formula, which we've already calculated, comma, and then the number of ratings goes next in the formula, which again, we've already calculated. And then we press enter. And there we have our 95% confidence level. And I'm going to remove the decimal places. We then create a predicted figure for today, whether this is a speed rating or an official rating, or it doesn't matter. Um, but we need to predict a rating for today. If you're using the racing pose, this could be a TS figure or an RPR figure or whatever. It's not important. So I'm just using a very simple average for a rough prediction um, by averaging the last eight races speed figures for each horse. So there we go, our predicted speed figure for today. Now we want to calculate the potential variance or range of this speed figure. So the lower is equals our predicted figure minus our confidence and the upper is our predicted figure minor, uh, sorry, plus the confidence and this is the important figure so wisecrack we predict to run at 119 but could be anywhere between 94 and 143 so you see wisecrack's variance is a lot larger than ajdard Right, and then we perform this calculation for every runner in the race, and I'm just going to copy the formulas down to make it quicker to enter. And now we are starting to get useful figures, so how can we use this? Okay, I'm just going to copy our horse down here, and I'm going to copy these three figures, the predicted, the lower and the upper, next to them. I'm pasting them as values so that so that we don't have the formulas copied. Okay, so how do we use this? So how can we use this variance? Well, it's changed the whole shape of the race because um, you know, looking at this, we initially thought, well, it's quite close with Ashdod much higher. Um, but now let's Let's take a look at the whole shape of this race, now that we understand the variance. So the first thing we can see is that Wisecracks, the highest that we would expect him to perform, is still lower than the highest low figure, if that makes sense. So let, let me run through that again. So our top rated on the lowest variance 
is Ashdod. And Wisecrack at 143, his highest expected performance in this race, with a 95% confidence, is still going to be less than Ashdod. So we can probably remove him as being a possible contender. Whereas for Mighty Claire, the highest figure is above that lower, so Mighty Claire is a potential runner. So I'm going to mark a potential potential contender. And then you'll notice that all of the other three runners, their highest figure, this is a 95% confidence that their highest speed in this race is going to be less than Ashdod's lowest expected speed. So we can say that they're probably unlikely to be contenders. The only horse that's really likely to contend with Ashdod is going to be Mighty Claire. Oh, sorry, Mighty Clarets. <laughs> the column wasn't wide enough. There we go. It's going to be Mighty Clarets. And there we have two potential runners in this race. And obviously this is dependent on how good your ratings are, but this is why you must take into account variance. Um, variance is very important. It will quite often completely change how you look at a race and who you think has a chance and who you think doesn't stand a chance in that race. Um, you can also take this one stage further, which I won't go into too much detail now, but I'll just give you the idea so that you can investigate it yourself if you want. Um, and that is improvement. So if Wisecrack has been improving steadily or rapidly at a certain level, then you may say, well, he's also a contender because, you know, based on the previous races, we expect his upper level to be 143, but he's been improving. So he could make 150. So he could also be a contender. But that's kind of an extra, uh, more advanced technique and level. And this video is just designed to show you and explain why you should always consider the variance of ratings when you're analysing a race. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch up with you soon. Bye for now.